Today on Weekend Wake Shop, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at how to play the main riff from He-Man Woman Hater by Extreme. Check it out. <laughs> Hey there kids and welcome to this week's installment of Weekend Wake Shop here with your best buddy, Uncle Ben. Extreme 2 Porno Graffiti is one of my favorite records of all time and one of my favorite tunes on there is He-Man Woman Hater which opens up with a really sick riff that I've never really seen a very clear tab or lesson on so I figured that would be a good one to dive into here on Weekend Wake Shop. But before we start diving deep into what makes this riff so cool, let's hear it again at Stepdad Speed. <laughs> And as always, you guys can find a full tab for this over on my Instagram page. So head over to Ben Eller Guitars and give me a follow. Find the tab for this week's lesson, learn how to play it, then upload a video of yourself shredding through it along with the hashtag Weekend Wing Shop. Okay, for starters, this is tuned down a half step. So tune your guitar down one note on every string so that you're at E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. I want to mention too that everything I'm about to show you is subject to little variations here and there throughout the song. Nuno is one of those players, kind of like Eddie Van Halen, who does stuff a little different every time he plays it. So sometimes you hear some of these ghost notes we're going to talk about, sometimes you don't. So just keep that in mind. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do here is to play an A power chord. That's open A, second D, and second G strings, which I'm doing just with the first finger bar. After this, using an upstroke, tag your open A string. This is a little pickup note that leads into the run. Again, that's one of those ghost notes that's there sometimes and other times it's not, so keep that in mind. Then you're going to play the first run in the riff. Okay, I'm palm muting back here, so set that right hand down on the strings. And what you're going to start off with here is a downstroke on your third fret A string, and then do a hammer on to the fourth. After this, using an upstroke, play your D string. And then what you're going to do is to go back to your fourth fret A with a downstroke, third fret A with an upstroke and then pull off to open. Then do the same thing on the low E string. Downstroke on four, upstroke on three, pull off to open. So it's, it sounds really weird slow like that, but when you speed it up, there you go. Now coming off of that run, what you're gonna do is to play the fourth fret G string with a pinch harmonic and give it a whole step bend. Now, you never hear the bend come back down. It doesn't sound like this, like you're playing Cat Scratch Fever or something. You just hear the bend go up, and then he switches to the second fret on the G string, okay? Now, after you play that two on the G, there's two little muted strokes. Again, this is the really subtle stuff, but it's totally there if you listen closely on the recording. He's just kind of laying his fingers across mostly the D and G strings, and just giving it a little down up over here with the right hand. After you do that muted down up, play another A power chord. That's open A, second D, second G. So it's like this. So now you should have this. So after you play that A power chord we were just talking about, what you're gonna do is to give it another upstroke on the open A as a little ghost note to lead you into the second run. Now it's almost the same thing as the first run. It's just one note different, check it out. You're going to do a downstroke on your third A, hammering on four. And then instead of hitting the open D, what you're going to do is to hit the open G. Again, it's palm muted. It's really short sounding, so keep that in mind. And then do the same stuff as before. Fourth fret A, third fret A, pulling to open. Same thing on the E string. Four, three, pull to open. So that's... And after that, what you're going to do is to play that same 4th fret G string with the pinch harmonic and the whole step bend, followed by the two, followed by the two muted strokes, exactly like what you did the first time. 
So now so far in the riff, what we should have is this. After this, we enter into the back section of the riff. How you're going to start this section is with this C sus2 chord. A lot of times I see this written out as C add 9, and a lot of times I see people play this as a G instead, which is completely wrong. It's a C sus2. What we're going to do here is to play the third fret A string, muted D string, it's just choked out by the underside of my middle finger, open G, third fret B, third fret high E. And what he's going to do is do a down strum, then an up strum. That up strum is right before you switch to a D5 chord. Now this is just my open D string, 2nd fret G, 3rd fret B. And you're going to strum that two times. Now after you strum those two D chords, there's again a muted down up strum that's just barely noticeable. Just laying his fingers across the strings, and again, mainly D and G strings, just giving it a little down up. You can leave it out and it doesn't make that much of a difference, but it is there. So after this, what you're going to do is to play this lick. Now what I'm doing here is I'm playing the 5th fret on the D string with my 2nd finger. I'm going to hit that 5 and slide up to 7. And then while still holding this 7th fret note and sustaining it out, I'm going to grab the 7 on the B string. I'm going to play that note and then slide it down to 5. Okay, so it's D on 5 sliding to 7, B on 7 sliding to 5. And let those notes ring out together like this. In other words, don't make them separate. They should ring out together. And then he also tags just the B string fret 5 with another upstroke after he slides back down to it. That's the next section. You're going to return to your D power chord, open D, second G, third B. Give it a little down strum and an up strum. And as soon as you're done with that up strum, what you're going to do is to play the third fret D, fourth fret D, second fret G two times. And then what you're going to do is to play that third fret D with a pull off to open. So it's like this. Real bluesy. And then you're going to play basically that same lick that you played a second ago. So it's going to be your 5th fret D sliding to 7, 7th fret B sliding to 5. He doesn't do the extra note that time, it's just... So that's the entire first rep through the riff. Let's play through it again kind of slow here. Now the next time through the riff, what he's going to do is to play all of the exact same stuff. But instead of playing this a second time at the very end, like we did a second ago, he subs that out for two different things. There's kind of a rhythm part and a lead part, like that. Now if you're playing the rhythm part like I did in the intro, what you're going to do is instead of playing that lick a second time, you're going to play a big old ACDC style G, that's your 3rd fret low E string, muted A, open D, open G, 3rd B, 3rd high E, and then follow through with a big D5 power chord again, open D, 2nd G, 3rd B. So it sounds something like this. Now if you don't want to play that G and D, and play the lead part, you're going to play this lick instead. So what this is, is again, I'm palm muting back here at the bridge, and I'm playing the 4th fret D string, hammering on to 5, open G, then what I'm going to do is to play the 5th D, 4th D, pulling off to open, like that, and then play the same thing, but just uh, move to a lower set of strings. So I'm going to play the 4th fret A, hammering on to 5, open D, 5th A, 4th A, pulling off to open, just like that. And again, that replaces the second time through that lick right there instead. So if I was playing the back half of the riff, it might sound like this. And that is the entire riff.
I'll tell you, the hardest part of this entire riff is keeping it clean, especially when you do that pinch harmonic on the fourth fret G. See, you just get done playing that run, right? Which has you playing a bunch of open strings. Your open D is in there, your open A is in there, your open E is in there. And if you're not careful, those open strings will continue to ring out while you're doing your bend. And if you're not careful, you'll have some bleed over, and it'll sound really bad if you're playing a guitar with a tremolo on it, because whenever you bend that string, it'll make that open string sound out of tune, like this. Your best bet to combat that noise is to use the thumb. You'll notice that Nuno is one of those guys, kind of like Eddie, that plays in that, you know, kind of thumb over, mangle it and strangle it position a lot. And that's partially because you can use your thumb to kill out those low strings whenever you don't want them to be heard. So basically what I'm kind of getting at here is whenever you're coming off of that run and you're fixing to go to that fourth fret G string, what I want you to do is whenever you clamp down on that fourth G, using your thumb, wrap it around the top of the neck right here just to silence out that low E string like this. Do you see how that guy clamped down as soon as I grabbed that fourth G? Be sure not to, you know, really follow my words and clamp down. You don't want to fret the notes or anything. You just want enough pressure to stop the low E, just like that right there. It doesn't take much. You got to be soft about it. Using that trick, you're going to be able to get this riff sounding really clean. Good luck if you're playing a seven string or an eight string. So there you go guys, a complete lesson on how to play one of Nuno's sickest riffs ever. If you've never listened to Extreme 2 Pointer Graffiti, I recommend you go out and get that thing as soon as you can. Every track is full of just ridiculous, amazing guitar playing. It's one of my favorite records ever. Thanks as always for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. You guys can follow my Facebook fan page over on facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. You can follow me on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars. And if you're interested in booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons, be sure to drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. Stay tuned for another sick lick next week. Cheers, guys.